My name is Katie McCabe, and I am the co-author with legendary civil rights attorney W. Johnson Roundtree of Mighty Justice, My Life in Civil Rights. And I am so grateful to the Gaithersburg Book Festival for giving me and all of the other authors the opportunity to share our books with you in these very unsettling and difficult times. I am delighted to be able to talk to you about this book that has been so much a part of my life and the woman with whom I was privileged to walk on a very long journey, more than 10 years, uh, dating back to when I first met her in 1995. Dovey Roundtree, who lived to be 104 years old and left us two years ago, put down such enormous footsteps in the United States that it is difficult to know where to begin. Her life is a series of firsts. She shattered Jim Crow in bus transportation across state lines and in the case, Sarah Keys versus Carolina Coach Company provided the ammunition that empowered then Attorney General Robert F. Kennedy during the Freedom Riders campaign to finally put a stop to Jim Crow in interstate bus travel. He used W. Roundtree's case to bring the Interstate Commerce Commission, the very segregationist Interstate Commerce Commission, to its knees, and finally to open up integrated travel. In Washington, D.C., where she practiced law for almost 50 years, she upended the white patriarchy of the Washington, D.C. legal system as a criminal defense lawyer she, as a black woman, beginning in 1951, defended African-American clients in an all-white system. The courthouses at the time that she began practicing were so segregated that black attorneys had to leave the courthouses to eat or to use the bathroom. Imagine being a woman and a woman of color at a time like that. And yet she took cases of African-American clients and she prevailed. And ultimately she gained such respect in the Washington DC legal community that she became an icon and was ultimately honored by almost every bar association, local and national, including the American Bar Association for her work. If you are saying to yourself, why have I never heard of this woman? You are like the thousands of readers of the New York Times on May the 21st, 2018, who read her long obituary and asked the question and wrote to the Times saying, why have I never heard of this woman? She broke so many barriers and defied so many stereotypes even before she came into the bar of Washington DC, she had already been a first in the class of the very first black women to become officers in the newly formed Women's Army Auxiliary Corps. She led the vanguard of women ordained to the ministry in the African Methodist Episcopal Church. And yet, her name was not a household name outside Washington. Why? Well, there is a five-minute answer to that question and probably an hour-long answer Certainly a part of the reason for the lack of coverage of Dovey Roundtree has to do with the fact that the civil rights movement was driven by 
males. It was very chauvinistic, and women typically were not given credit. There is also the issue of Washington, D.C., and the power structure that obtained here, and the incredible way in which W. Roundtree came up against a very rigidly segregated Washington, D.C. And in cases that rattled Washington to its core, most famously, her successful defense of the African-American man who was accused of murdering JFK mistress Mary Pinchot Meyer on the CNO Canal. In winning acquittal for Ray Crump in that case, Dovey Roundtree came up against the government, the U.S. Attorney's Office. She made it impossible, once she won acquittal for Ray Crump, for the government to shut down any further investigation into what really lay behind that murder. So she was a very, very powerful force, and we began a very, very long journey, a 10-year collaboration that survived her failing health, her move from Washington to Charlotte, North Carolina, the distance between us and our differences. Over this long period, I was able to gain Dovey's trust. She took me to her bosom. She shared with me a great deal about her life beyond the facts. And we undertook to write not just a story together, but a first-person narrative that really is a meditation, a rumination on this extraordinary life. Yes, it deals with the civil rights movement and all of the great civil rights leaders who mentored her, Mary McLeod Bethune, A. Philip Randolph, Martin Luther King, all of those incredible people. But this book minds deeper ore than the facts of her life or her intersection with the civil rights movement. It mines the ore of justice. What is justice? How do we reach it? How do we strive for it in a world that militates against it? And how do we hold on to our sense of ourselves in a world like that? I am proud to say that Oprah's magazine called it an essential and exquisite memoir. And I believe that it is essential. I believed it when I met Dovey in 1995, and I still believe it. I hope that you will, too, when you get your copy. I hope you'll visit me at katiemccabeauthor.com to learn more about W. Roundtree, about our collaboration, and about the book that she and I did together. Thank you for letting me share this with you, for coming into my writer's life, into my writer's room, and may you all go safely, and as Dovey said to the people she loved when she took her leave from them, go well, my friends, go well.